Hi everybody, so welcome back to the channel. So today we've got a, a old friend of ours, Igor Ermakov. He was in our group four years ago or something, Igor? Yeah, yeah, 3.5, 3.5 mm. years yeah. ago. So you are currently, from, if memory serves me correctly, you're at Skoltek, uh, that's in Moscow, yeah. in Russia. And he is going to do a talk on what he's been working on. The title is Almost Complete Local Revivals in Quantum Time Capsule. So uh, this was looks like a recently published work in PRA. So uh, very exciting. Great to have you back, Igor. Yeah, and thanks. take it away. Okay. Um, so, yes, my name is uh, Igor Yermakov. Uh, good uh, uh, evening, everyone there in Shanghai. It's... Uh, still afternoon in Moscow. Nice to see you all here. And today I'll tell you the story about uh, physical phenomena of almost complete uh, revivals in quantum antibody systems. It was uh, recently introduced in our latest paper, uh, the references on the screen. And I will also tell you how to implement uh, this phenomena for delayed secret disclosures, or if I want a cool headline and I want a cool headline, for quantum time capsules. Uh, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, deliver this talk. I also would like to thank Ministry of Science and Higher Education of Russian Federation for supporting me financially. Now let me do a quick self-introduction. Some of you might already know me since I spent a little bit more than one year at uh, NYU Shanghai at the Quantum Technology Lab. Uh, I really miss those times and uh, Apparently, I miss China, I miss it so hard, so I'm now preparing to take HSK-5 and thinking about opening it to bubble. Well, HSK-5? Oh my god, you've overtaken us. <laughs> yeah. well, oh, you crazy things, Tim. So you've got HSK-4 already, then, then you're the same as me. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't take a uh, four examination, but uh, I think HSK-4 I will pass. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Okay. Yeah. We need that proof. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. We don't easier, believe you. We don't believe you. <laughs> it's easier to study Chinese than you outside China because it's yeah. less pressure. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. for now, I'm uh, affiliated with this three place uh, is uh, Stiklov Mathematical Institute, uh, where I work for Laboratory of Mathematical Methods of Quantum Technology. I'm also a PhD for at Skoltech. And uh, lastly, but not least importantly, I do a part time job at the MIPT at the Lab for Physics of Complex Quantum Systems. Boris Fine, who is running this lab, is uh, my co author on uh, this paper. So I prepared uh, this uh, one minute slide uh, for those ones who are busy and uh, want just a uh, short summary of what has been done. It will be a little bit technical and then yeah, I will uh, walk you through this uh, step by step. So I study uh, quantum thermalization or in uh, other words, how uh, quantum systems uh, come to thermal equilibrium. And uh, this paper was about uh, almost complete uh, uh, local revivals in quantum antibody systems. Main message may be formulated uh, as in the many body Hilbert space, uh, there is a measure zero set of initial states such that on the level of local observables, uh, it exhibits almost complete revival at an arbitrary and predetermined moment of time. Uh, it's important to emphasize here that it works for almost arbitrary Hamiltonian, unless you deliberately search for counterexamples, so uh, I'm sure you'll find them. It survives both thermodynamic limit and it's uh, accessible in smaller systems. And uh, by almost complete, I imply uh, that uh, the, the discrepancy between complete and uh, almost complete revival is exponentially small. Okay, now let's start from the beginning. Before we talk about revivals, let's uh, talk about collapses, because in order for something to revive, it should collapse at first. Uh, and uh, one of the uh, most usual reasons to cause a collapse is uh, simple equilibration. So if you have a cup of coffee, you better drink it fast, otherwise it will be a room 
nasty room temperature mix of uh, caffeine and milk. I personally love this, but uh, not many people do. Uh, this other chart is uh, just uh, a demonstration that uh, conception of equilibration may uh, go a little bit beyond physics. I do not encourage you to use physics on financial market or anywhere. I mean, from the size of my room, you can clearly infer that I'm far from being a financial expert. Anyway, uh, that's uh, some price uh, for housing around 2008. Uh, in US and uh, you can clearly see that sometimes uh, market as an interacting system may be uh, out of equilibrium and uh, it will eventually equilibrate since it's a closed system. Okay, now about quantum mechanics. Uh, there is a standard assumption that uh, interacting uh, many body systems uh, reach thermal equilibrium. Uh, if it's initially initialized out of it. Uh, so now, uh, if you want, we may introduce uh, some Hamiltonian to have some tangible thing in uh, our hands. But as I say it, and as I will say a couple times more, the Hamiltonian is not really important here. It can be pretty much arbitrary. So think about it as about uh, a qubit inside the reservoir. So uh, if uh, the qubit and the reservoir is governed uh, by this Hamiltonian, which lies in the xy plane, uh, everything uh, outside this plane costs us uh, energy and uh, our system wants it to return back to the xy plane. So if you have a reservoir and if you excite a uh, polarized one qubit along the axis, uh, it will qu quickly equilibrate uh, to zero uh, because uh, the rest of uh, those blue arrows on the screen will just uh, want this red arrow to come back to the X, Y. Uh, a bit of technical details, uh, like, like on this picture, you can see uh, uh, this uh, polarization pro projection on the axis of uh, this red arrow. And uh, if we have this Hamiltonian in our mind, it uh, does uh, quickly equilibrate if you do nothing about it. Uh, yes, yeah, so I just uh, also want to mention a few technical details that this Hamiltonian is not special in any case. It has no disorder, no constraints. Uh, uh, it uh, satisfies eigenstate thermalization hypothesis. It's, pretty much chaotic uh, quantum Hamiltonian. Uh, but uh, not all the systems in quantum mechanics are like this. Uh, moreover, uh, if everything uh, just uh, reach an equilibrium, if you just uh, take this standard assumption for granted, there is nothing really interesting because everything around us, every physical effect is something about uh, being non something being non equilibrium like biological systems anything it's all about time scales and uh, how particular how in particular some system approaches equilibrium uh, and this is why it's important to determine applicability limits of these assumptions that everything comes to equilibrium and uh, study how it comes to this. Um, one practical way to do it is to uh, look at the systems which uh, exhibit some unusual thermalization or no thermalization at all. Uh, the examples are on the screen. It's uh, in this community. It's pretty well known that if you introduce a disorder, it uh, leads. It usually leads to localization, which uh, prevents. Uh, uh, equilibration also integrability if you have many conservation laws it may simply protect your state from exploring uh, the rest of the hilbert space and uh, going to the equilibrium uh, sector and uh, yeah one of the most one of the recent ones it's uh, constraints so called quantum scars uh, which was experimental re realized in Rydberg blockage recently but all these uh, examples are associated with some restrictions 
which we put on the system. So, uh, and what if we uh, take an alternative look and, at it and do not consider uh, restrictions on the system, but ask ourselves, what if we consider special initial states and uh, Hamiltonian let it be arbitrary, like with some reasonable uh, restrictions? Hey, Igor, so, could I ask okay. a quick question at this point of uh, yes. just yeah. uh, so you know what do you mean exactly by equilibrium? Is it like thermal equilibrium, like a Boltzmann equilibrium, or do you mean something more general? Uh, so what I mean by equilibrium uh, here, uh, like for example, uh, on on this plot is just. Uh, equilibrium uh, value of uh, this as the observable. So we have, uh, this Hamiltonian have many eigenstates and we can plot uh, uh, the value of SZ uh, versus uh, eigenenergy. And uh, it's uh, always zero because uh, uh, for any eigenenergy, uh, any SZ is zero because it's in all in XY. I hope uh, that uh, explains it a little bit. So, uh, yeah, so we have uh, our SZ observable, which uh, uh, quickly relaxes zero. And uh, what if we just, uh, yeah, we want to do something about it, but what if we do nothing and uh, just wait? Will it ever uh, come back? Uh, to the original value. In fact, it will, uh, as was uh, proven in uh, 1957 in this uh, famous quantum recurrence theorem, a quantum Poincaré theorem. However, uh, and it will come back because uh, the entire uh, quantum state will come back. Uh, uh, the dynamics uh, is unitary and uh, it's uh, supposed to repeat itself. However, the times, uh, uh, the expected times of uh, such point carry recurrences are exponentially large with respect to the Hilbert space, which means that in pr practice, uh, they would e exceed uh, basically the lifetimes of the universe. So uh, in practice, you will never uh, observe such point carry recurrences in many body systems. In small uh, size systems, you observe them, but uh, once the system is five qubits or more, it's uh, hopeless. Okay, can we have uh, such recurrence earlier? Uh, one way to uh, construct all this uh, out of equilibrium state at predetermined moment of time was uh, independently suggested by Anatoly Damarsky in 2019. He simply uh, suggested to utilize uh, uh, time reversal. So if we have uh, such uh, initial state, which is a, a superposition of uh, some state uh, uh, which is originally out of equilibrium and uh, back time reverse of this state. So now if you act uh, on this state with uh, time evolution operator, it will uh, transfer psi uh, zero uh, to psi tau and psi minus tau to psi zero, uh, giving us uh, half of the maximally possible uh, state uh, value of uh, this local observable. Uh, as you can see here, it uh, does uh, a revival, but it revives not from uh, one half to one half. It revives from one, uh, point, one divided by four to one divided by four. And if you look at the fidelity in the inset, uh, you can clearly see uh, that uh, there is a spike in this fidelity it's because we assume this time reversal. So uh, it's uh, half of the original wave function is still there uh, by construction. But can we uh, do better than that? Can we uh, uh, do a revival from one half to one half? And uh, as we show in our paper, yes, we can do uh, we can construct such a state by tuning uh, the wall razor wire uh, such that uh, the state will exhibit a revival at uh, some uh, desired time, which we call revival time. And this revival is almost complete in the sense that uh, this discrepancy uh, from one half 
uh, goes uh, to zero exponentially. And as you can see uh, in the infat, uh, the fidelity does not recover. So we do not assume uh, any time reversal. It's uh, a many body effect. It's the whole, the entire reservoir which works to this recovery. So it's like uh, uh, you have this uh, polarized spin, uh, it collapses. And after some time, reservoir uh, does some positive interference to pump up uh, this local observable again. And uh, then it uh, collapses and uh, stays in the equilibrium virtually forever. So I did omit uh, a particular uh, an explanation how to construct this because it will uh, it can be explained in five time in five minutes, but uh, not uh, it cannot be explained in less than five minutes. So it's pretty simple. So if you're interested, I just uh, invite you to read the paper. You will spend really like uh, five or six minutes, and you will understand everything. I, I guarantee. Uh, however, uh, one thing I want to mention is that to construct uh, this revival, you need to know a uh, quantum evolution operator, which uh, in a way restricts us uh, to uh, kind of small uh, spin systems, like up to 20 spins, uh, because uh, we cannot compute quantum evolution operator for longer, longer spin chains. And here, uh, like uh, on uh, the level of ideas, we just solve the inverse problem of quantum dynamics. Instead of uh, evaluating uh, the dynamics of uh, given initial state, we take uh, the evolution operator and search for initial state, which will satisfy our needs. So now the properties of uh, those reviving state. Uh, first uh, property I want to mention is that it survives thermodynamic limit. Uh, here on the plot uh, C, you can see this. Uh, the, the delta is uh, basically the discrepancy between uh, the revived value and uh, one half, which is maximal out of equilibrium value. And it, uh, with the system size, it goes to zero exponentially fast. Uh, another property is that on the other hand, it is uh, already clearly pronounced for small system sizes, which is uh, five to 15 spins. And uh, it, so it uh, can be absurd there. Uh, there are more uh, uh, statistical properties of this phenomena. Uh, first is that uh, this state uh, is practically indistinguishable from a random thermal state which is uh, which just leads to featureless fluctuations. Uh, you can see from this plot that on the uh, earlier times, uh, the dynamics of this observable coincides with the with that of random reservoir. Uh, this is uh, the manifestation of quantum typicality, uh, which basically means that uh, whatever random state uh, we take uh, from the Hilbert space, it uh, on it correctly. Uh, represents uh, uh, decay dynamics. And uh, the last uh, property is that uh, this state, uh, this revival, it has a character of uh, time reverse relaxation, uh, which is, uh, if you think about it, it's interesting because if you look at this revival as at uh, some just large fluctuation, at some catastrophic event, and if you ask yourself, if I expect uh, some large fluctuation in my system, what character uh, of it should be, uh, on which time scale it will occur? And uh, the statistical physics answers actually that it will occur on the same time scale as in the, and in the same shape as re as uh, reversed uh, relaxation. And indeed, uh, if you look at this revival, you can see that its shape, uh, it coincides with the reverse time relaxation. 
Okay, now uh, let's talk about uh, applications. Uh, one of the most uh, exciting applications is uh, delayed disclosure of a secret. So what is this uh, delayed disclosure of secret? It's basically, uh, imagine you need to share uh, some piece of valuable information, but you, want to, you don't want to reveal it uh, up to uh, some moment of time in the future. So you record it now and you want uh, it to be available, like, let's say, in one year. And uh, if anyone accesses it before, you don't want uh, uh, it to be revealed. So with uh, this revival, so we can realize it because uh, you can uh, encode, for example, a bit of information into the reviving state. Uh, such that like one corresponds to one half and zero corresponds to mi minus one half. And then you can launch quantum evolution. And then you supposed to do a measurement of a correct local observable at the correct moment of time in order to recover this information, whether it's one or zero. If you uh, interfere with the system earlier uh, by doing some measurement, you uh, destroy uh, this uh, highly entangled ACR state. And uh, not just you mention some featureless fluctuations, uh, which uh, give you nothing. Uh, you just, uh, at, if you then just uh, measure it at the correct time, you will also measure nothing but fluctuations. So uh, you ultimately destroy the information uh, by doing the measurement at the wrong time. Uh, here is the uh, diagrammatic representation of this phenomenon. You can uh, prepare one qubit in a state uh, like uh, zero or one, and another qubit you can prepare in uh, a state of this finely tuned reservoir. Uh, this preparation is difficult, uh, but uh, we're thinking about ways to ameliorate it, uh, but let's not talk about it right now. And then you launch this quantum evolution, and at some time, uh, tau, uh, which is revival time, you're supposed to do a measurement. And if you uh, do it at the right time, uh, you recover your information. Otherwise, you'll just uh, measure equilibrium value and uh, lose your information. Uh, OK, so this, is, uh, this was an example of time capsule, of quantum time capsule, of uh, something artificial. But uh, uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, time capsules uh, exist uh, in nature uh, they occur naturally. So you are in China, guys, so you know who are the terracotta warriors, guys. And this is not a time capsule, but uh, near this uh, terracotta warrior, there is a mausoleum of Qin Shi Huan, uh, which is not yet excavated. Uh, it's not yet excavated because archaeologists are afraid that once they dig into this uh, hill, Everything inside will fade uh, to ashes because uh, the very because it's very old. And uh, if uh, you inaccurate, you will accidentally launch some irreversible process, uh, change in pressure, or whatever, and uh, it's it's just gone. There were many cases like this uh, in a previous century where people were not that uh, good in archaeology. So, but. Inside this hill, uh, some really valuable information could be stored. For example, like uh, maybe library of the emperor. And uh, it also represents some sort of time capsule. So it was recorded uh, like uh, 2.5 thousand years ago. And uh, now uh, we cannot access it. And if we try to access this information now, we most likely destroy it. So we have to wait up to some moment in future where we uh, advanced, have a technologies advanced enough uh, to recover it. But uh, uh, our mechanism of delayed disclosure of secret, secret allows to create an artificial uh, time capsule. So uh, can we uh, do the same in the classical physics? Uh, 
I don't know about uh, classical algorithms in information theory, but what I can argue is that you cannot do uh, the same effect in, uh, you cannot repeat uh, almost complete revivals in uh, classical physics uh, and implement it to delay secret disclosures. Uh, why? Because in chaotic systems, uh, you usually cannot store information, any information for long enough time. Uh, and in non-chaotic systems, you indeed can uh, create almost complete revival. It's fine. For example, if you have a waveguide and shine with uh, uh, some frequencies with different amplitudes, you can adjust it like that. It uh, At some moment of time, it will... Uh, interfere to a meaningful signal. However, uh, it's uh, useless for secret disclosures because no physical principle protects you uh, here uh, because nothing can stop me from measurement every coordinate of this classical system non-destructively and evaluate uh, uh, the, how it will evolve uh, to a certain point in future. Uh, on my computer, uh, have uh, two more applications uh, for this. One is uh, benchmarking of quantum simulators with uh, a single measurement of local observable. Uh, in short, I propose to use ACR state as a target state uh, uh, for testing quantum computers. And if and uh, to prove that you actually reached a desired state on your quantum simulator, you only do a single local measurement of a single observable. And it will prove that you uh, did both state preparation and quantum evolution right, whereas uh, a straightforward quantum tomography is not available in quantum systems. And uh, last uh, interesting application is uh, so-called entanglement assistance setting entanglement assisted sensing yet uh, yeah let's uh, maybe it's uh, based on the fact that uh, if you change the hamiltonian parameters the revival value uh, will also be changed so it's just in short how it is okay uh, so now uh, thank you for your attention and uh, let's uh, get to uh, questions yeah, thanks, Igor. Uh, questions? Well, I have a comment. Well, so, uh, I actually have a comment about the classical time capsule. I yes. think you, I think you could build it um, if you use witness encryption uh, based on multi-linear maps. You can encrypt an information in a way that the decrypting key is a solution to some very difficult nonlinear problem. So you can encrypt information, delete the original, and the problem is so hard that you need like maybe years to solve it, like maybe compute some hash, find some hash value many times or something like this. And then even you cannot access the information and what the, the classical thing that actually prevents you from, that protects this time capsule is the computational complexity of the multi-linear map that decrypts this information. Just so, maybe. You, so basically here, the restricting factor is uh, in time uh, that we just uh, need uh, this much amount of time to uh, decode uh, this information. Yeah, uh, you need to solve system. some problem to yeah. get the decrypting key, basically. Yeah, okay, yeah. I, I wasn't saying that it's impossible classically. What I was saying is that it's impossible to do by analogy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm uh, just, just, just sharing ideas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, very, very cool. But I mean, Thank you. I mean, in terms of anything classical, like, I mean, the, the unique feature of this is that, you know, if you get it wrong once, right, then it'll mess up the state oh. and you've really mm. destroyed it, right? So yeah. there's 
basically it's like you got one shot to get it right. And <laughs> but yeah, it, but if you don't have a strong one measurement, how do you do that measurement at the exact moment that you make it? Right. I don't know. Don't ask me. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you how do you know or you know in advance to make the measurement at a particular time? Uh, yes, I'm. Uh, I encode something and tell you. Yeah, measure it at uh, in like ten minutes. And yes, you're right. You got only one shot. Uh, if if you do it earlier, or if I do it earlier, or anyone, it's uh, all messed up. So what if you miss and you wait double the time? Would it cycle back? And... Mm. No? What? what uh, no. It's, it's not uh, unitary. No. Uh, if you do nothing, uh, if you... It's, basically, it revives only once. Okay, okay. I see. Yeah. yeah. That's, 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 and that's furthermore, there's no way to make it uh, to... Uh, Revive two times. Uh, it's uh, in order to uh, make it to revive one time. You use the wall uh, reservoir. Uh, you uh, you should uh, prepare the reservoir in the highly entangled state, and uh, this entanglement uh, will uh, push this uh, observable out of equilibrium only once, and then. Uh, this power is gone. Uh, what you can do, you can uh, make two revivals, but not to almost complete state. You can make two revivals to one divided by uh, approximately three and to four to one divided by four, etc. But they will not be as clearly pronounced above equilibrium as this one. I'm trying to think of, uh, I mean, I like the quantum time capsule. It's very catchy, right? But it, I, I'm not sure if it has this, you know, one shot element to it because in a in a time capsule, I, you know, it's not necessarily a one shot thing, right? Normally, I mean, you, like you bury yeah. all your little things and under a tree, and then you open it up. And you know. but I mean, yes. I wonder if there's a like a cool way to really nail it. This one shot, this, you know, M and M type one shot one opportunity. Maybe <laughs> maybe. It would be possible to do something like um, starting from this one shot, some other reservoir like becomes always measurable, like somehow coupled to reservoirs, like a switch. Or something. Yeah. Okay. Something like this. Like use it as a control uh, qubit for something else. And then what? what? So the what other one. Want? So the other one would be. Uh, measurable. So there would oh. be like, for example, unknown basis of measurement, mm. something like that here. You're making it not one shot now. Yes. I just want like a time lock. Oh. So after a certain amount of time, you can just measure. Oh. Oh. But I like the one shot aspect. It's kind of, it's, yeah, okay. It's I don't know what the, the, I mean, I don't know what the application I, is. Exactly, I, I, I mean, yeah. I, I just think like, I you know, right tool for the right the job. You know, this. But maybe <laughs> that's more close to the definition of time capsule yeah. like when yeah. you open it it's always there right? yeah mm. yeah but i think it depends what you need to achieve right yes yeah 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 yeah, yeah. if you want to really stress someone you can uh, use that <laughs> yeah that's right yeah, <laughs> yeah but, uh, igor so i have this question is that so you're making it like one shot right so you have to measure at that exact moment what's the time scale of this you know, this, uh, you know, the error of the measurement time that you make sure that uh, I can catch the right thing. Like, uh, you can uh, do this measurement in the vicinity of uh, the revival. It's fine. Um, and uh, that's indeed the fastest time scale of the system. It uh, uh, relaxes fast, it recovers fast. But I think uh, like uh, this... Uh, so, so basically, take your like interaction, average interaction energy in your system. If you do superconducted qubits or anything, and uh, take this, so like uh, some J interaction constant, and uh, uh, take inverse of it, and you'll have a characteristic time of uh, this uh, one qubit interaction. But 
like in practice it will be uh what i don't know like uh it it will be relatively long times like maybe uh in the ballpark, maybe nanoseconds. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I'm just taking numbers out of my hand, but I'm sure that uh, you, with modern clocks, you can be precise enough to uh, uh, do a shot at the correct time. Can I delay this time? You know, can I push it forward or bring it? You know, let's say, can I push it backwards? You know, more into the future, or can I bring it closer to the present? Can Peak any time of the revival, except for really early times. You, it's it shouldn't be ten. It's just uh, this state is designed that it will revive at ten. I can design you state that will revive at fifteen or at twenty or okay. Okay. two thousand, whatever. So it depends on the state. Yes, uh, you give me the time. I give you the state. And you need to be a, when you say quantum evolution has to be known, like actually yes. what, what do you mean by that? Is it like, uh, it has to be so exactly soluble or what? In practice, yeah. yeah. In practice, we need to compute uh, the matrix, quantum evolution matrix, E minus I uh, HT uh, operator. So you need to compute large operator uh, to be able to construct the state. Let, like, uh, let me maybe uh, show you the, uh, the sketch. So here uh, is how you usually do uh, quantum time evolution. You have initial wave factor, right? And you apply uh, quantum evolution metrics to it, and you have a wave factor at the time tau. So here we uh, look at the initial wave factor as to a variable, You're looking for the desired one. And uh, we have some restrictions for the vector at uh, the time tau. But uh, we need to know uh, the U operator, which is a quantum evolution operator. So, you know the final time? You know the, evo the, the matrix that governs the evolution? Then find the initial state. Something like that. So, I mean, what if this matrix is huge, right? Then is it pretty hard to find this initial state? Uh, th this matrix is indeed huge. It scales exponentially with the system side, size. Mm. So you can only do it for uh, accessible system sizes, like uh, for 20 qubits or less, uh, by doing it this method. That's uh, like a pretty direct calculation. and. But I, I, I wouldn't think that it's a problem because if you want to assess state, uh, <clears throat> if you want to implement it in practice, uh, the revivals are clearly pronounced for the systems of 5 to 10 qubits. So for 5 to 10 qubits, you can easily calculate it on your laptop, uh, even, even though it's a 2 power 10 uh, matrix. It's not that big. Uh, problem is, Actually, when you found uh, this uh, psi zero state, problem is experimentally prepared because it's uh, it's entanglement entropy is uh, at at its maximum. Uh, so you need uh, too many gates uh, to prepare this state correctly, and uh, the question of practical use would be. Uh, can we somehow modify the system to have maybe not that pronounced revival, maybe uh, uh, something uh, less out of equilibrium, but something uh, feasible with uh, what we have now experimentally? Can we, if, we, if you give me, let's say, uh, 100 uh, gate operations, can I... Uh, construct something similar to this or if you give me another system uh, with another degree of freedom can i construct uh, something which will exhibit signatures of acr uh with uh but but in experiment yeah all these all these ibm ibm and uh, uh google Okay, sorry, it's, uh, yeah, Google and what was this? EC, not ECU, what? USTC. USTC. <laughs> yeah, those guys are ballooning, you know, gates every day. So, 
What? Ballooning, <laughs> ballooning gates? What? <laughs> what? I mean, they're adding more gates to their system almost every oh. every now oh, and you, then. You mean qubits? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, qubits, yes. So, so I think maybe on these systems, um, at least doing these this small ones, five five qubits or so might be possible. I don't know. But, that but, would no, be no, but I that think is. Igor explained that the problem is the depth of the circuit mm-hmm. for the state operation. Yes, it's the depth. It's like yeah. uh, how many gates operations you need. So here, like, I'm sorry. Here, this uh, the hardest part is this uh, preparation of Tyres. It's uh, <coughs> you just, uh, for example, you you know, if you just um, you know optimize the circuit, basically. So, for example, you go to some basis where it's the entanglement structure is simple and then you just do local unitaries i don't know i mean i just feel like uh, given an arbitrary state you can probably find a reasonably simple circuit to make it um the gates might be quite you know sort of funny gates like some funny angles to rotate but i mean they can do that exactly and uh, yeah. they can then count that it's so uh, basically very similar to random uh, state. It's uh, uh, hard to think. But uh, I think uh, like uh, you still can, <clears throat> I think in principle, it's uh, still maybe possible to uh, do something similar with uh, fewer gates. Uh, but it requires, uh, I mean, at this stage, it just requires a uh, calculation. Like uh, you need to know uh, your experimental capacity, like how many gates you can do, and uh, yeah, I think I think it's possible. It's, yeah, mm. well, maybe small system, but yeah, maybe yeah for initially, system. but yeah, you'd be able to do it. I was I was thinking about the use case because if you can only do it for accessible systems like up to 20 qubits but you know the Hilbert space 20 qubits it's classically enumerable so you know if you encode a secret this way someone could just enumerate everything and find the secret but then I immediately thought that if your secret unlocks some sort of I don't know black box function that takes a long time to evaluate then he you know the Even information you measure is like not so big. So let's say it's a like a key to decrypt something, or you can okay. just enumerate it because there's not so much data there. It's like two to the power of twenty. You can enumerate it and just try every possibility. Right. Okay. So so maybe the question is uh, so can you um expand upon this so it's not just one qubit as the observable so can we you know have a lot of qubits and then it's got inside a bigger system and then we can kind of store more information like obfuscated in some way yeah so it's not just one well, qubit. In, in fact not really uh, you know if uh, you want to ha- i understand that uh, you want to share uh, bigger strings of information but in order to do this you would need to have uh, several systems for, like, you would need one system for uh, okay. every qubit. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, oh, okay. You just scale up like that. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. But- they, they like uh, their connectivity shouldn't be, uh, they, they shouldn't be interconnected. It's uh, okay. Interconnected. Yeah, it's simple actually. Yeah. So that's nice. fine. Yeah. Oh, that's sure. So one reservoir will hold one key. One bit. One bit. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. More than one bit. It's, you have like as many bits as when you have. Because if it's just one bit, then. No. So, I mean, right now it just does one bit of information. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And then the rest of it is kind of to scramble it or oh, okay. to hide it while it's, mm. um, so, you know, it's okay, not at so, the right time. So the true information is which bit it is. Like, let's say you have 256 bits information you need 256 systems and the secret is actually which bit it is because if it's just one bit you can just try both zero and one yeah 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 no so 
I mean, the way I understand it, you know, the observable, which is just the first qubit, is the information. So presumably that's either up or down, right? And then the rest of it is just to scramble. Yeah. Yeah. So so for true information, you need several tank. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. you need a lot of these. But I mean, just repeat this whole thing. Yeah. So that's fine. Yeah. But uh, in in fact, to to, uh, recover the information, uh, the necessity to uh, transmit uh, bigger strings uh, simplifies uh, this. So if you really need to confirm that it's if if you really transmit in one bit only, you still have to prepare uh, many independent systems to prove that it's not accidentally one, right? But if you have a string and uh, uh, of qubits. And uh, you need to just two copies of uh, your entire systems, which transmit in information. Because uh, if you measure two kinds of sight and strings, uh, that means that with the probability uh, of one minus one divided by two power length of the string, you uh, measure the right thing. Okay. All right. Cool. Then we wrap up there. Okay. Well, oh, no, I no, have one no, thing no, to no. say. <laughs> you didn't give me my coffee. Uh, you started with coffee at the beginning. So you didn't give me my coffee. You, are, you owe us coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I also have comments on that. So when you show the coffee, you, you put coffee as an example of, you know, like dissipation. And I was thinking coffee is an example of revival, you know, because it's... <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thing, duality, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. Thanks, Igor. Uh, so thanks very much. Very interesting. Yeah. Come back anytime and tell us, and tell us about what you're doing. doing. See you, everybody. Bye. 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 That's just for the viewers, bye. <laughs> <laughs>